Hi, my name is John and welcome to The Trap. This is a weekly run through of the New Jersey Devil season. What happened, what the scores were, and who's leading what. I'll also touch on some NHL news and even some NHL stuff as well. For your viewing pleasure, I'll also have some kind of hockey game playing as I ramble. Most of the time it'll be NHL 17 since that's the current flavor of the year, but I'll mix in some older stuff and maybe go into the retro realm of things. So without further ado, let's get started. First off, let's go over the Devils offseason and preseason a little bit since a lot has happened since the Devils last hit the ice. The big one has got to be the trade between the Devils and the Edmonton Oilers over the summer. The Devils sent Adam Larson over to Edmonton and in return the Oilers sent forward number one pick Taylor Hall to the Devils. The Devils are hoping that Hall can help out the offense and maybe help his former teammate and junior Adam Henrik turn his game up a notch as well. The addition of Bo Bennett and recent waiver pickup P.A. Parentel are more like rolls of the dice that if they turn up sevens will definitely give the offense a boost. Three kids also cracked the lineup due to some real good preseason play from them. Miles Wood, who in my opinion had one of the best forward performances on the team, and Blake Spears who pretty much fits that fast attacking and supportive mantra. Spears will probably get at least 9 NHL games to prove that he's worth burning an ELC year on, but I think ultimately he'll go back to juniors after game number 9. Pavel Zaka is the last kid on the list, but he had the best chance out of the three to make it on the roster. He had a great year in junior last year and didn't look at a place in his one NHL game at the end of last season. It will be interesting to see if Coach Hines puts these three guys on the same line. He played with the idea during preseason and they looked decent, but rolling the dice when the games count might be another story. On defense, the Devils added Ben Lovejoy and Finnish League Defenseman of the Year winner Johan Ovitu, who had probably the best preseason out of all the players. He showed some really nice passing skills and was very responsible on defense. The Devils are hoping that he can contribute offensively, something that has been lacking on the blue line for quite some time. Steve Santini has also made the cut since John Merrill is out with a broken finger for at least a month. Santini will get a taste of the NHL before heading down to Albany and sliding into the top pairing there. The players holding the dice on defense would be newly acquired Kyle Quincy and Damon Severson. After a real sophomore slump for Severson, the Devils are hoping he can find his offensive touch that he showed in year one. As for Quincy, if he can be defensively reliable as he was in Detroit, that should be good enough. In net, there was no question that Corey Schneider was going to start, but there was a battle for the backup spot between Keith Kincaid and Scott Wedgwood. In the end, Kincaid won the spot and Wedgwood was sent down to Albany where he will most likely hold down the fort for them. Now that I've got you caught up on the offseason stuff, let's talk about the week that was for the Devils. On Thursday night, the Devils opened the season on the road against the Florida Panthers. The Panthers were without Nick Bustang and Jonathan Huberdeau who were injured during the preseason. In the first period, the Panthers got a lucky goal that bounced off of Ben Love joining in. The goal was credited to Jonathan Marciso, who had a pretty good preseason and pestered the Devils in the first. Late in the first, Johan Ovitu set up a diving Pavel Zaka up front and he hit the crossbar with his shot. Zaka would get the puck back to Ovitu on the point and he blasted one that went off a PA Parento and in to tie the game up at one after one. The second period was a little more evenly matched with both teams getting some good chances on the man advantage. Both goalies stood tall and the score was still 1-1 after two. In the third, the Panthers really poured it on, but Corey Schneider stonewalls them to keep it tied at one at the end of regulation. In overtime, Michael Matheson buys Damon Severson behind the Devils net and sets up Alex Barkov in the slot for the game winner. The Devils get a point, but it could have easily been zero if it weren't for the stellar play of Corey Schneider. The shots were 34-24 in favor of the Panthers, but give the Devils defense some credit. They got 16 block shots and helped Schneider out. Although if you ask me, he would have preferred the goals rather than the block shots, hashtag goals for Corey. The Devils won't have to wait long to get some revenge as they head back down to Sunrise at the beginning of November. Saturday night, the Devils traveled to Tampa Bay to take on the Lightning. The Lightning are coming off of an offensive slugfest against Detroit in their last game. They put up 6 goals to get their first win of the year. It was the Devils though that got the scoring going early in this game as John Moore blasts a puck that gets deflected by Kyle Palmieri and passes Andre Vasilevsky to make it 1 0 less than a minute into the first. A couple of minutes later, the new line of Zajac, Hall, and Parenteau pays dividends. Parenteau passes the puck to Zajac cross ice and he fires a shot that gets deflected by Anton Strawman and into the 5 hole of Vasilevsky and it's 2 0 Devils less than 5 minutes into the first. In the second, Andre Palat fakes a shot that freezes all the Devils defense and Schneider. 
He then makes a slap pass to Steven Stamkos who is charging in front of the net and he puts it home to cut the lead to 2-1. Three minutes later, the Lightning get another chance as Nikita Kucherov takes a shot that gets blocked, but the puck unfortunately goes right to Alex Killorn and he scores to tie the game up. With less than five minutes left in the period, the Lightning take a penalty and it looked like the Devils have scored. Coach John Cooper throws the challenge flag claiming that the play was offsides and he wins it. Tough break for New Jersey as they seem to get some momentum back after being dominated for most of the period. The Devils won the first, but the Lightning won the second. At the start of the third, Devontae smith Pelly takes a delay of game penalty and the Lightning were mere inches away from scoring as the puck tiptoes on the goal line, but does not completely cross the line. Notch the tough breaks board at one apiece. At the 5 minute mark, Brandon Point passes to the point to Jason Garrison he fires one that is tipped by the Terry Philpleyan in. That makes it 3-2 Lightning in their first lead of the game. Late in the period, Kyle Palmer gets some glorious chances, but got turned away by Veselevsky. The Lightning hold on to win it 3-2 and the Devils suffer their first regulation loss of the season. The shots were even at 34 apiece and Steven Stamkos increases his goal streak versus New Jersey to 4. Corey Schneider makes 31 saves but Andre Veselevsky was up to the task as well as he makes 32 saves. The Lightning improved to 2-0 on the season, the Devils fall to 0-1-1. The Devils will get a chance to even up the series in Newark on the 29th of October. Let's take a look at the standings after week 1. For now I'll just show you the Metropolitan Division, but later in the season when playoff spots are on the line, I'll show the whole conference. If you didn't know, the top 3 spots in each division get a playoff berth, which would be the Penguins, the Flyers, and the Capitals as of now. New Jersey's in the middle of the pack with their single point, and the Islanders and the Blue Jackets have yet to earn a point. Next week's games will have the Devils at home at the start and end of the week with a mini road trip to Boston in the middle. Tuesday is their home opener against a Ducks team that is struggling to find a win in their East Coast trip. They also have not signed defenseman Hampus Lindholm to a deal, so both the team and GM have their work cut out for them. Thursday the Devils will travel to Boston for their home opener. Boston will be coming off of a three game road trip but will have two days rest so they should be good to go by then. Finally the Devils come back home to take on Zach Parise and the Minnesota Wild. For the Wild this will be the start of a four game Eastern Conference road trip and I'm sure the Devils fans will give Parise a proper welcome. If the Devils can snack three out of the six available points I think I can live with that especially if the win comes off of Boston. That's it for this week, thank you for watching and hopefully you enjoyed it. At the end of each episode, I'll put in a play of the week sort of video. This week's video will actually come from the preseason, but it still counts. If you have any questions or comments, you can post them in the comments section or tweet them to me at Jin4576. I'll see you next week and let's go Devils! It into the corner, Bodie can't clear it away. Puck taken back, Taylor Hall has it for the Devils. Taylor Hall's first home game, wearing Devils red, has the puck in the circle, shoots, he scores! What New Jersey hopes is the first of many. And this all started from Matt Bodie unable to get the puck out because of the pursuit from Taylor Hall from behind. He keeps the play alive. Obi2 does a real good job at the blue line that you mentioned as well, Kanji. That's where Taylor Hall stripped the puck from Matt Bodie. Gets it low to Pavel Zaka. Good vision. Looking from the skate to the stick. And boy, oh boy, he's going to be fun to watch all season long. Sharp angle. He snaps this puck. Wastes no time. Quick release. Perfect spot, Joe, to give the Devils a 3-2.